Dr. Asino. Okay. Okay. Yes, Thank you, Dr. Asino. Thank you. All right, well, thank you everybody um, for making the time to come and attend our, our workshop. So Ayo and I will, will be uh, talking about uh, building a room in a virtual citizen science um, expo. So as Dr. Nicole has uh, briefly introduced us, we are both uh, involved in the Spotty Rain project and we are working um, together building the, the, the virtual citizens expo. So we will be doing a, a dem almost like a demonstration, but at the same time a workshop here. So, so the, the, the goal of this uh, workshop is to uh, help um, everyone here who's attending to build your own um, Mozilla Hub room. So we're hoping that at the end of uh, this workshop, uh, you will be, uh, you'll be, you will acquire basic necessary skills uh, to, to be able to build a Mozilla Hub room. And in, in the process, use Spoke, which is uh, the scene editing tool to integrate our instructional materials, uh, which include website, videos, uh, and 3D models and other advanced features. So here's a introductory video of our, uh, the VCST. Uh, Ayo, go ahead and please, uh, if you don't mind playing it. So thank, uh, thank you, I also, the, the, the video kind of highlights what the VC essay is and what rooms are involved. Uh, so you can see, talk, uh, it kind of show the video of the leaf room, the insect room and the water and drought, um, the, the rooms which are also here, it's the, the city and science uh, exhibitors room. So the question we have is how can you uh, participate in uh, VC SE? So there's two, two ways you can participate. The two types of room that you can participate in is the Beckett uh, Explorer's Room, uh, which we will go in detail, but in the room, you will be able to create uh, logbook challenges and, and share tools for um, nature observations. So some, some of those are like ID guides. Uh, and then it also uh, in, the, in those rooms, you'll be able to uh, create, uh, see three images, of uh, different leaves and some of the native species in Oklahoma. Uh, so you'll be able to build those to be, uh, if when you're participating or when you're involved in building the room, these are some of the things that uh, make you look for, look, look at how you can apply your own um, materials that you can add to the space itself. The other room is uh, that we have is this, the citizen science exhibitor room. So that includes the blue tom room, uh, the drought mitigation center room, and the Cocoros room. So in those rooms, you can share it. You can add your uh, educational resources, uh, volunteer maps, uh, host meet, host a meet a real scientist in the the virtual world. Uh, and as of right now, we had um, one that we hosted yesterday. Uh, it's a blue tom. So these are some of the the events that you can host within that space. Uh, next slide. All right, just to add, add to that. So every Thursdays uh, for the remaining part of April, we are still hosting the uh, Meet the Real Scientist in, the, in that space at 3.30 to 4 p.m. All right. 
So what are the resources uh, that you, you need uh, to build the rooms in a virtual space? Um, so websites, so this, these are three of the websites that uh, we, we, we've, we felt like it's, uh, you should kind of explore and see what is. So one of the ones is Mozilla Hub. So these are the one, this is the one, the main one that we will be using. Um, then we have unsplash.com. So unsplash.com is a website that uh, you can go to and um, download free images. Uh, they are very quality, high image, uh, well, real quality images that you can, um, if you go there and look for some images you want to use for your space. Uh, and then we have Sketchfab, um, which is a, a, web, a, a site that you can go to and also download uh, 3D models that you can integrate uh, into your space. So those are three um, sites that uh, you can, if you have other sites that you download uh, images, uh, which will be our focus, uh, make sure you, uh, you can use that as well. Uh, some of the items that you need or I would say the, the items necessary for uh, the workshop, uh, of course, you have to have a high speed in it and a personal computer. Um, I recommend a mouse with a roller on the top. So something, if you can see like the roller, uh, that helps. Uh, why I chose that, it, it helps, especially when we move from uh, into spoke, where we are starting to edit uh, scenes uh, you, it makes it easier to move around and uh, I guess navigate in that space. Um, the web browser that we recommend is Google Chrome, but uh, you can also use Firefox and uh, Microsoft Edge as well, but uh, we felt like uh, Google Chrome seemed to work uh, best for us. And then of course, a uh, Mozilla Hub account. And then, um, this, you may need it or not, but uh, a screen capture software, if you want to uh, capture some uh, scenes that you want to add into your um, your virtual rooms. Uh, one of the ones that we use that's uh, free that comes with Microsoft is the snipping tool. And then uh, Snagit is another one that I use, um, but it's, it's uh, you have to pay, I think, it, $62, so, but Snippet is a free one that comes with uh, Microsoft. And I believe uh, if you use Mac, uh, that uh, Mac comes with a free uh, screen capture as well. So here is our, um, the Virtual Citizen Science Expo main hall. So uh, once you get into the space, which we will, uh, towards the end of this uh, presentation, we will get the chance to get into the space. But that's the landing spot. So once you get in uh, as an avatar, you either land on the right side or the left side. So you will see the, the hall in your space. Right? And then uh, it's three sections, the landing spot, then the lobby, and then the top floor. So if you look straight in, uh, you will see in the lobby, it has those directional um, arrows. So as you navigate or move into that space, you'll get closer, you will see where uh, each of the different rooms, the water and uh, drought rooms uh, to the right and then to the, to the left, uh, it's the deck and explore room. So as you go into the lobby space, um, you'll be able to navigate to the right or the left. And then um, the, the, top, the top floor, uh, you, if you look up at the welcome uh, sign, on the right is the Kokoras um, uh, poster and on the left is the National Drought Mitigation Center. Uh, poster, but there's other posters. Uh, as you if you go around on the top, uh, you will see other. But those are some of the uh, citizen science project posters that are up there. Um, they are clickable, so if you click on those posters, uh, it will pull up the the website and tells you what each of the organizations are. So, just like giving us some ideas, you know, as you build your room, kind of think through it, uh, what you can add to the space as well and some of the interactivity that's involved um, uh, that you can integrate into this space. And uh, then this slide here, uh, Ayo will be talking about the, the, tip, uh, the navigation uh, within Mozilla Hub. So go ahead, Ayo. Thank you, Clements. 
Yeah, so uh, navigating is very easy. Uh, once you are able to orient yourself properly, right when you land on the spot. So on your keyboard, the main thing you just have to know is the arrow keys up, down, left and right are to move in their respective directions. And as just as well, if you place your hand on the WASD, they also work just like the arrow keys. So the most important thing also to note is once you um, bag into a corner, you can always use Q and E to turn around. Instead of you just not being able to move at that corner, just press on the Q to turn to the left or E to turn to the right. So there are also some fun keys. If you just want to fly through the space, you can activate that through the G key. And then if you want to move faster, you can hold on the shift and press the any of the arrow keys. So once we get into the practice at the end of the uh, presentation, we go all through all these keys once again, and you get familiar with them in moving and navigating through the space. Okay. Next slide. <clears throat> Oh, okay, that slide is taking a all right. Okay, thank you. I so this this is one of our backyard um, explorer room. So um, as you can see, it's the lift room. Um, I think it's very cool. I really like the lift room. Um, so the lift room uh, or the backyard explorer rooms, uh, they. The, room, the rooms are divided into two sections. Uh, it's hard to see in, in, the, in the picture here, but the front section tend to have those instructional materials. And then in the back of the room, it has the pictures of the, uh, the different tree species or the leaves um, in Oklahoma, and then the, the 3D models of the, the different types of leaves. So you can actually go into the space and uh, be able to navigate around and around the leaves and kind of see, see it in 3D. So, uh, in, 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 in front, when you land in that room or when you join the room and enter the room, uh, you are welcomed by um, a video of heat. So if you look right in the middle, that's uh, heat from Southeast Oklahoma Library System. Uh, he's a librarian there and um, he, in his video, he'll tell you about what to find in the rooms and what to expect in the room. So some of the, the materials that are in the, in, the, in the space is the logbook challenge. Um, you can, uh, it's on it, to the right of the video. And then um, you can also find the ID guide, uh, volunteer opportunities and information and featured park where um, after filling out the, the, the logbook challenge or to, to, to do that logbook activity, you can go to a park that's featured or any of the park that you are on you to fill out the logbook and then bring it back to the library. So that's, um, the basic overview of the uh, watch feature into that you can integrate into your room. Okay, next slide. So the citizen science exhibit exhibitor rooms. Um, this is the the blue time room, um, and you can see you can integrate uh, the, the different uh, videos models uh, and information. So in the blue time room, um, we had the volunteer map that was integrated in there, uh, educational resources. So games, uh, videos, handouts, and uh, other activities that uh, you want your uh, participant to be uh, involved in can be also integrated in, into the room. Uh, some of the, you can also have sign up for volunteer and then social media, and you can put your information in there, uh, contact information or volunteer coordinators that, uh, that you, they can, the attendees can contact uh, in, regarding volunteer and what volunteer project that's happening. So, 
so some of the some of the things that we'll be learning, the basics that we'll be learning um, on the spoke dashboard. So remember, spoke is the scene editing tool, which is part of Mozilla Hub. Um, so for this uh, first activity specifically, we'll be learning about how to the basics to integrate uh, images, and then also the advanced features of adding a 3D image, uh, 3D models through Sketchfab. Uh, architecture of the, the the scene if you want to add other structure to it and then you can import bin images or um, and then also some uh, some of the basic tools that are part of the spoke is um, as we walk through you will be learn how to uh, choose a landing spot so that area where um, when you enter that spot that you can choose so you can move it on wherever you want in the space but uh, once we get there you can kind of get a feel of it and choose a landing spot that you want uh, your attendees to kind of enter to the space. Um, and then of course, you can, we'll be learning about dragging and replacing images, uh, uploading images and rotating them within the space that um, feel getting the feel of the depth perception of moving uh, images and placing them in the right place. And then, um, the spawn point. So the spawn points are is the the point where you place the your I guess I would say the, it's your avatar to appear or for somebody to appear into the room. That's a spawn point. Um, and as we go through the different elements for uh, in uh, spoke, there's the spoke um, spawn points and waypoint. So the difference between two, the waypoint, they have almost have the same icon, but the waypoint is uh, you can place those in different areas in the room where instead of moving forward, you can just kind of use your uh, right click on the right click on your mouse and it kind of teleports you to that certain uh, point. I mean, to that certain point within within that space. And uh, I find it, it's, it's nice, especially if you have a VR Google on um, you sometimes experience dizziness. Uh, the waypoint tend to be very helpful when moving within that space. So for uh, this session, for the activities, that we, what the first thing we're going to do is explore the the VCSC main hall, and then um, this, after that we're going to sign up Mozilla, for Mozilla accounts, and then we're going to go through choosing. Uh, template and saving it in spokes. So that's going to be the sessions for uh, today. And uh, Ayo, um, if you don't mind, you, we're going to share the um, not share, but yeah, we're going to go, go go ahead and click the link. Yeah, let's ask. Let's see if there's is there are there any questions. So that was the the presentation, and now we're going to do these activities. In the, are you going to put it in chat, the link for us? Or are you going to take us for a ride first? We're going to go for a ride through Mozilla Hubs, and then we can all have a chance to do it ourselves. Or are we meeting inside? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I think we should meet inside. OK. Yes, and link in the chat. Yes, all if you right. don't mind putting the link in the chat. But uh, once you click the link, this is what's going to be in front of your screen. So you want to join the room and then you're gonna go through the process of selecting the avatar that you need, you want or whatever avatar you want you want to choose. And once you go through that, you can just, uh, when then you're gonna enter the room and it's gonna uh, place you um, in that landing spot that uh, I kind of walked through earlier in the, in the, uh, the presentation. Will you show us on your screen? Okay. So I go ahead and uh, join the room, and then it's gonna tell you to uh, make sure you test your microphones and your speakers, okay. and make sure they're working well, and then enter the room. And do I need to make an avatar and a display name first? Then yes. So once you choose your avatar, it's gonna give you a random name to it, mm -hmm. uh, but you, it, you can change it and put your name as well. So for identification purposes uh, and just for this, 
I think it's, yeah, if you can change it to your name, that'd be great. So IO has landed on the left side of the VCSC. Um, you may, uh, if once you join, you probably end up on the same spot or on the opposite end. And then you start navigating forward. Uh, you can use the, uh, the arrow keys, forward arrow key to move forward. And then side to side, if you want to go left or right, and then backwards. So I, you don't want mind moving forward and up the stairs. And then now you're in the lobby. So as mentioned earlier, um, you have the sign here, it tells you uh, where the different projects are. So to the left is the backyard explorer rooms, the uh, insect and leaf rooms. To the right is uh, the drought uh, monitor rooms. Um, and in the case, I believe we, uh, and then you go to the right, it's where the Kokoras drought mitigation center and the blue tom rooms are. And then on the top of course are the different season science projects. So, So on the left, that's blue tom room. And then uh, to the right, I, you don't mind kind of going around to the right or behind you, I guess. Uh, and then we have the, the National Drought Mitigation Center room to the left and then the Kokoraz room to the right. So and then we want, I, can we navigate to the opposite end, if you don't mind, uh, just for, to the Beckett Expo rooms, please. So it looks uh, like static, uh, almost like in the, if on Zoom, but when you're actually in that space, you move very smoothly. And it's supposed to be. What room are we gonna go into? We should all go together. Yeah, so the room that I really wanted to uh, go in first is the lift room uh, since I introduced it. Um, in the presentation. So it's the room that uh, if we all wanted to go into the lift room, you can go ahead and click visit room and then we all jump in there. So similar to how we entered the main hall, you're gonna go through the same process, um, but you, I think, I believe your name and your avatar will be the same. So you can just enter the room and then uh, join. So here is the lift room. Um, once you're in there, you have a uh, heat video right in front of you. It should automatically play. If it doesn't play, you feel free to click it and uh, listen to heat introduce the room. And then um, in that front area, you have that video of heat. Um, and then you have the ID guides, the log books. Uh, feel free to click on those and see uh, what the website's gonna pull up. And then as you navigate through the back of the room, it has pictures of the different leaves uh, native to Oklahoma and some of the 3D um, models of the different leaves. Maybe, typically. Clement, maybe mute your, your Mozilla Hub's volume because you're echoing a little bit. But if you muted yourself in the Hub, we could all hear you on Zoom. OK, can you guys hear me still? Yeah. 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 OK. <laughs> I think it's uh, bouncing back on my speaker. So, yeah, so that's the, the back. That made it worse. The, um, <laughs> so feel free to kind of click on different um, 
the uh, the materials that are on the wall, um, the pictures of the leaves, they uh, just pictures, so then an interactive. Um, so, but the front section tend to have the where it has the ID guides, the log books. Uh, feel free to click on those and um, see what uh, it does. So, and again, as you navigate through, uh, think of, you know, once you start building your room, what you can in, uh, include in there. Um, uh, still big echo, sorry. Okay. I'm not sure why it's echoing on my phone. My... Do we go back to the slides now? Can we, do, are we gonna to jump to a citizen science room? Oh. <clears throat> Okay, um, so Dr. Nicole uh, placed the, the link to the blue time room. So if you want, if you're done, we want to move that uh, to the blue time room and do uh, explore that room. So I will jump and wait for you guys in the blue time room. Let's see who else is here. Okay. One, two, three. Uh, look like Dr. Nicole is not here. But um, so this is the blue time room. Uh, it's different from the, uh, the scene from the Beckett Explorer room, but it's more open space. Um, it has inf information of, um, and that's what the, the riparian areas. Uh, you wanna uh, tend to, to the main, the front area so I can kind of see. Yeah, so you, in, in, in here you can add stuff about, uh, as you build your room again, just, 
get ideas on what to uh, integrate into a room. So here you can see in a blue time, they have information on how to uh, check volumes and maps, uh, games, uh, then different videos that can be uh, integrated into the room or, or the space. So those are some of the things that, uh, you know, as you work to your own room um, in the next uh, couple of few weeks, uh, think of what you can create or the different things that you can uh, put into your space. So, but feel free to walk around, explore. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. It was really neat to build the room with Blue Thumb because they have some really amazing educational curriculum already at hand. You know, so if you have training videos or informational videos, they are a stream monitor quality monitoring group. And so they just have some really great little fish videos and access to digital online games for learning about water. Um, you know, so, and then um, we just let, just last night, Cheryl Cheadle from Blue Thumb was in there. I don't know, Clement, can you show us real quick the like the the face the scientist has? So we you can host a live event in there, Cassie, you, with your own face talking to people. And so it's just sort of like a fun and engaging way to answer questions um, and share your stuff. I don't know if you have time. Should we all get signed up with our own Mozilla Hub account so that we can get a, a template and start playing around building? Or are you gonna show us a little building first, Clement? Dr. Nicole, can you hear me? Now I can. I can. For some reason, it's now I can hear the echo. I'm trying to figure out, let me close the Mozilla Hub. Yeah, close the Hub. So we cannot, if you don't have a Mozilla Hub's account, in order to download these templates and get started, you'll want one. So go to the hubs.mozilla.com and get yourself um, an account. And um, it's a straightforward uh, process. So once you get to the, um, the, the Mozilla Hub, um, you're gonna enter your email address and then you'll be you'll receive an email, and then, and then you have to click on the link, and it's going to sign you in automatically. 
So that's how uh, you're gonna create an account, it's straightforward. Now it's gonna be the same account that you'll be using to log into Spoke as well. But once you log into Mozilla Hub, you can move to Spoke uh, without logging back in. And um, Aya, you don't mind, um, let me share the screen so I can kind of walk through it. Okay. Okay, so let me share my screen real quick. Screen share. Okay, so Let me move this down a little bit. So, um, once, oh okay. God. I no, I'm saying. Ask, does anyone have any trouble creating their Mozilla Ops account? No? Okay. Go ahead, Clement. Thank you. Okay, so um, once in the Mozilla Hub, it's, uh, this is spoke. So in the Hub, it will, uh, let me get into Hub real quick. Uh, so in the Hub, if you look on the left side of the menu on the top here, you will see spoke. So you want to click on that and you should come up to something like this. Um, let me know. Um, I'm guessing uh, everybody is good so far. Okay. Anybody have a problem getting to spoke? Okay, so I think we're good here. Okay. So, um, so I, uh, as I was working working through this, I was trying to make it easier for everybody to get it uh, get the scenes working. Um, it didn't work the way I wanted. So what I did was that I worked around it, and I will be sharing the files that I will be you. I want you guys to import into your scene, um, and that's the files that uh, you'll be you'll be working with uh, in the next couple of weeks. So I'm gonna go ahead and share the file real quick with you guys, and then walk through the process of how to get into Spoke and get it ready for uh, to edit this in. So let me get go ahead and share the file real quick on here. Uh, on the chat, there we go. Minimize that. Let me see if I can drag and drop. Yep. So these are the two uh, uh, spoke files that uh, you can choose. One is the the water and drought uh, room, and the other one is the backend explorer uh, room. So which are one that you feel comfortable with or which are one that you want to edit, um, you can choose from, you can download it to your desktop and then kind of work from there. And I will go through how to import those into your spoke uh, pro, uh, profile. So let me close this real quick and then open this up. All right. Um, oh, before I move forward, uh, do you guys, do you have any problem uh, downloading the the files that I share? Did you, where did you share them? Where did you share them? Uh, it should be on the chat. Nothing has come through yet. No. Let me see. I got them. You direct messaged me. Oh, it went directly. <laughs> I am so sorry. See, you guys are having some <laughs> secret conversation over there while the rest of us are left alone. 
All right, now let me get it right. Thank you for pointing it out, <laughs> Dr. Nicole. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, let me do it again. All right, here we go. That's one, that's the Beckett Explorer. And then we have the water and drought. So make sure you save it to uh, your desktop or somewhere where you, uh, you can remember. And then we're gonna go, I'm gonna show you how to upload it to your Spoke uh, account. All right, so um, the first thing you wanna do on here is um, click uh, get started or you can, and then you should see something, um, the project list here. So if you're new, there's nothing will be listed here. And then you wanna say, you wanna click the start or the plus sign in the new project. Uh, there's different scenes here that you can import, but uh, the one that I, you can choose any that you want for now. So um, in my case, I'm just gonna choose this empty room here for now. Uh, it's the, and I'm gonna upload it. What was the name of that room? Um, all right, uh, it's called, let me see. It is, it's the Hobbs modular uh, gallery, like on the top of the hierarchy here. You don't have to choose the choose that one. You can choose any, but I'm trying to walk you through how to replace the, 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 the scene. So once you get to the, the, the scene, so I mean, with the mouse, with the, the scroller, you can, if you move back and forth, you can get into the scene. Uh, into the space and see how um, the the scene is, but we're gonna be replacing that with what um, the uh, the spoke files that I sent you. So to to do that, you want to go to the top left corner where there's like the three bars. Click on that, and then file, and then you want to import the the the, the legacy spoke project. So it. Once you click that, it, you can choose the file, one of the two files that you want to import. So I'm gonna click that and it's gonna say, uh, do you wish to continue? Say yes, or I mean, say okay. And then you point to where you saved uh, the file. So in my case, I saved it, uh, spoke legacy files. And uh, since I really like the leaf room, I will click on that. And then I'll say open. And it's gonna load the leaf, uh, to, uh, the scene. And of course, uh, depending on the speed of your internet, it will load. So. Now my scene has been loaded and to make sure it's the right one, I can see it here, it says the Beckett Explorer room up here or the template. So I'm gonna go in and now I'm actually um, imported the correct uh, template that I wanted to work with. So that's how you, um, you wanna get uh, import the file. And then uh, the last step, to make sure it's saved on your account is to go up here uh, to the, the, the menu file and then save project as. So here, I'm just gonna put my name. You can save it whatever name you want. And then I'll click save project. And, um, if, to make sure it's saved, I can go back to the menu again, then back to my projects. And there it is. Now it's going to be listed. So it is saved on your uh, project files. When you log out, it's still there when you come back in. And that's what we'll be, we'll be doing in the next session is now uh, coming into it and start editing uh, 
and integrating uh, instructional materials uh, within the space. I mean, I feel like I, I maybe wasn't listening to the instructions. After I import it, ha my screen doesn't look like yours. It looks like something else. Did I, was I supposed to do something after I imported the Legacy Spoke project? Um, it should load, but again, also depending on your uh, network, mm -hmm. sometimes it will load, but it doesn't load through. You just have to uh, just kind of do it one or two times. Like I think we're here I'm on, on campus, so it's pretty fast. And it, once it loads, you will be seeing something similar to what's on the on the screen. I see. Yeah, yep. I see what you're seeing right there when I put mine in. Uh, you have to zoom into the it, it so loads into inside the, that box now. Ah, uh, okay. You gotta move into that box. Thank you. I know I was missing something. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So if you have that mouse with the scroll on the top, it's so uh, that's what I use because I find it very easy to use. And it's so for me, if I just scroll forward, I kind of start zooming in. I'm sorry to ask, but could you just kind of walk me? Because I was trying to keep up and then I don't know where I lost myself, but how to import the project? I got them downloaded. That I think that took me the longest time finding where I saved them, but. Okay. Um, you want to go to. Oh, I'm in spoke. I just don't know how to bring in your template. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you want to go to the menu on the top where I'm clicking. Can you see my screen? Yeah, okay. I don't have that. I don't have that. Start to start a project. Like a, a new empty project. Yeah, if you see the big plus sign, hit the big plus sign. And then it'll take you to to any template. You can do any one. And then once you're there, you can import the file. Got it. Thank you. OK, OK. Thank you, Nicole. We, we both got the newbie eyes. So <laughs> <laughs> I can speak your language. Yeah. Now I was trying to figure out where exactly um, I need to start from. So, But I think you, you picked up very well. Thank you. Uh, let me see just here. Then, uh, Cassie, like, if you if you still need help and or something you're stuck on, feel free to share your screen. We can. I think that way I'll I'll be able to see where exactly you are, and I can help. And yeah, so once, uh, remember to say once you're in, make sure uh, you save the project. So it appears on your list of projects. So in that way, um, the next time we meet, you can just go straight to the project files, open it, and we can go through uh, how to add images, move it around in the space, add other things to it. So. Are you going to show us a few things today? Or I guess we're almost out of time. Yeah, well, we're almost out of time. We are. But yeah. it's been fun. <laughs> so make sure I remember to save your project. And okay, so once we say, we, I think uh, that kind of sets up in a place where the next uh, session that we're going to have next week uh, is now diving into um, adding images uh, and then playing around with it and adding other, other items into the space. So uh, if you have any questions right now, feel free to ask. I wanted to ask Dana if, if she thought that tweens would like to build rooms, like any of your teen programmers, or what you were thinking about in terms of uh, a virtual room at your library.
think she. Uh, yes, I think that they would like it a lot. It's 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 pretty straightforward. And then Clement in the in future ones are going to show us how we can, you know, get three D models and images and things that are you know fun to place in the in the space. Um, and it's also really cool to interact in there. <laughs> So, and then um, Ayo, um, Dana, and Casey, if you guys haven't registered, um, Ayo, do you have that link? Yes. I mean, to share with uh, to them so they can register. Yeah, and then we can keep in touch with you uh, in the month of April. So I think I did register. I had a hard time finding the, because I, Apparently, I don't read real well. So, finding the link to the Zoom, it took me two two tries to get in. Okay. So, I had just sent the the registration form. Um, but I know you, you mentioned you guys registered already, so thank you for registering. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. So what's next time? We're gonna learn how to put, put things in and out of our space, pictures and videos and other fun stuff. Yes. Cool. So we'll be putting images, videos, uh, other stuff that you you want to integrate into that space, um, and just the basic um, elements of spoke. Um, and I guess uh, you you will definitely come across some of the advanced one, but we the point. I mean, the for the goal is to get stick on the basic ones for now. And as we progressively move forward, then we touch, start touching the, the advanced uh, elements or the the I um the features of spoke. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so that's yeah that's the end of our uh in the presentation and uh we definitely excited for the upcoming weeks and um, helping you guys build your rooms. <laughs>